deep in the constellation of Virgo is a strange elliptical galaxy known as M87. For years, astronomers have been baffled by a mysterious jet of matter observed exploding out of its nucleus. X-ray emissions of enormous power were later detected. The data indicated some unknown force lay hidden in the heart of the galaxy. A force revealed in the equations on Kip Thorne's notepad. The observational data from the galaxy M87 suggests that there's a gigantic black hole down in its center. This is really marvelous because the laws of physics have been telling us for many years that black holes should exist somewhere out there in the distant universe. I'm working to try to understand the details of the gravitational properties of such black holes. Most large galaxies like our own like M87, like the Andromeda Galaxy, contain supermassive black holes like this. Such a black hole cannot have been born by the collapse of a star. It has to have been born by the collapse of a huge cluster of billions of stars. If Doug works out the stationarity condition, you wouldn't be surprised if... One of the most powerful ways to get new ideas in astronomy research is to talk to people and often the best people to talk to are one's students. What would you expect? Do you want to tell me what you would expect? And so it's a marvelous thing to sit around in a relaxed atmosphere with the students and with other professors, throwing ideas back and forth. Roger and his student Nyack who really originally worked those ideas out back in uh, Cambridge. Perhaps I can give a very crude Newtonian analogy. The the resistance of a black hole is probably about 30 ohms. Do you really believe that in a realistic situation you're going to get impedance matching even within three orders of magnitude, that it's really going to be uh, 30 ohms out there? Uh, These two modes of work for a theorist, the quiet thinking by oneself in one study and the intense interaction are both crucial to success. My scientific goal for the coming decade is to watch a black hole be born by studying the gravity waves produced in its violent birth. In this endeavor, I'm working together with an experimental group. They are inventing and constructing a detector for such gravity waves. We now see into the universe with optical telescopes, with x-ray telescopes, with radio telescopes, with gamma ray telescopes. This is a gravity telescope. These detectors of gravity waves that use lasers have mirrors that the laser beams bounce off of. As the gravity wave passes, those mirrors get pushed back and forth relative to each other, and the laser light is used to measure their motions with very high precision. To a precision of less than the diameter of the nucleus of an atom, by studying those tiny, tiny motions in the laboratory, you are getting information about some of the largest, most violent explosions of the biggest objects in the universe. These gravity waves can tell us about the details of those vibrations, explosions, collapses, in a way that light, x-rays, radio waves never will be able to. Most black holes are probably immersed in the interstellar medium, the gas and the dust that floats between the stars. The strong gravity of a black hole will pull that gas and dust down onto the hole, heat it up, and make it radiate. In order to calculate the radiation produced, we need more data about the interstellar medium.